pleasure to have uh, Rodrigo Barbosa to speak on co-associative ALE vibrations and taking up case functions. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks for to Ludmil and to the organizers for inviting me. Um, I'll apologize because this is not a talk about mirror symmetry. Um, so, okay, so here's the outline. Um, so um, I'll, I'll give a brief description of G2 uh, geometry because um, I'm assuming that most people haven't um, seen anything about G2 manifolds before. <clears throat> And then um, I'll go on a little bit of a tangent. I'll um, briefly describe this Calabial hitching correspondence, which is a result of our Calabial threefolds. Um, and this is the result that we, we would like to have an analog of this result for G2 manifolds rather than Calabial manifolds. Um, and then in the main part, I will explain how to set it up and what you can, how to set it up such a, uh, a correspondence and what you can actually get in the G2 case, which is not really um, as good as what you get in the Calabial setting, but you know, um, you get what you get. So, and then I'll, I'll describe a generalization at the end. Okay, so co associative vibrations are analogs of special Lagrangian vibrations of Calabial threefolds. So, the co associative submanifolds are calibrated submanifolds um, of G2 manifolds. Um, and you know, for it, it's expected that these things exist, but they're very hard to construct. Uh, in fact, we don't know any examples for compact G2 manifolds. Um, if you were curious about seeing some non-trivial examples, like not on R7 or something, uh, you can see this recent work of Carigianis and Lotte uh, on these Brian Salomon manifolds, which are historically the first non-trivial uh, complete manifolds of G2 holonomy. There are three of them. They're like non-compact, asymptotically conical manifolds and then recently uh, people found uh, examples of these co-associative vibrations on them. Um, so Donaldson developed a theory of co-associative vibrations in a certain limit, in a certain adiabatic limit. Um, and this is, will be the main topic of this, this talk. Um, the, the adiabatic limit is in some sense uh, an analog of the large complex structure limit for Calabial manifolds. Uh, it's a limit where uh, you make the volume of the fibers go to zero. Um, and then, you know, the structure of the vibration um, becomes simpler. It becomes of a more topological nature. Um, so Donaldson laid the foundations of this theory and then it was further extended by Lee. Um, and this is the, first, the only time in this talk that I'm gonna use the, um, use the words mirror symmetry. Uh, the, in the in the math literature, this is the only paper I know that has um, you know some descrip description of what could be mirror symmetry for G two manifolds. Uh, you know he constructs from a adiabatic co-associative vibration a dual co-associative adiabatic co-associative vibration by uh, taking Mukai duality for the K three fibers. Uh, there's there are several uh, attempts to describe G two mirror symmetry in the physics literature, but in the math literature, this is the only one I know about. So, uh, okay, so, and then uh, more recently, Donaldson and Scaduto studied like um, the adiabatic version of associative submanifolds, which are also calibrated submanifolds in G2 manifolds. They are the analog of J holomorphic curves. Um, and these, uh, these adiabatic theory is described by gradient graphs on the base of the, of the vibration. Uh, so, it has, uh, so it has a very similar flavor to, uh, the analog theory for you know J holomorphic curves and left jet vibrations of symplectic manifolds, etc. Um, and in a different direction, but much before this, there was a, a physics paper by Pankov and Weinhold. They studied M theory compactifications on G2 spaces, uh, but fibered by AD singularities or ALE spaces resolving those singularities instead of K3 vibrations. So these are non compact. And they arrived at a similar, similar picture of Donaldson and Donaldson and Scaduto. Um, and in this theory, uh, the gradient graphs uh, that you get on the base, they have a description in terms of a gauge theory on the base. And this gauge theory is um, described by a set of equations that are in a sense a Riemannian version of the Hitchens equations. Now I'll talk about them shortly. 
So the question is uh, whether one can develop a theory similar to the one that Donaldson developed in the AD and ALE setting. And in particular, uh, what does this gauge theory defined on the base tell you about? Uh, can, can you reconstruct the G2 manifold like associative ALE vibration out of this gauge theory on the base? Um, and I'll just tell you that we, we don't know the full answer to this question yet, but there has been progress and that's what I'm gonna explain. So just some basics of G2 geometry. So G2 is the compact real form of the simple Lie algebra G2. Um, you know, this is the one that has a thinking diagram of two dots and three um, lines. Uh, a better description, more geometric for our purposes is, is like it's the automorphism group of the octonions. If you take the imaginary octonions, then you can define a tree form by this formula here. You use the inner product and the, and the bracket defined, defined by the octonion, octonionic structure. And then you get a tree form by this definition. And it turns out that G2 is exactly the stabilizer of this form inside of GL7. Um, you can also go the other way around. If you started an oriented vector space, seven dimensional vector space with a volume form, and you take a, uh, you know, an alternating tree tensor, you can write down uh, a symmetric tensor by this formula here. This, uh, I'm using IOTA to denote uh, contraction. So you contract the two vectors with the tree form, and then you wedge them all together. Uh, you wedge the two, two, the two of them together with the tree form. Um, so if you define G implicitly by this formula, um, then uh, you can actually uh, define the octonionic structure on W using this. So you can define the bracket such that the formula above holds um, this relation between phi and G phi. So that, you know, the stabilizer is again G2. So, you know, so the point of this is that now we can just say that once you have a three form in a seven dimension oriented vector space and um, you construct this symmetric tensor. If it's positive definite, then you can say that this is a G2 structure. So that's, um, we, we usually uh, use this notation. Um, and uh, an important fact is that if you find one such phi, um, then there is an open orbit, open GL7 orbit of G2 structures. So, you know, once you find one, you can move in any direction close by to find another one. This is very different from, for example, spin seven manifolds in which this orbit has higher co-dimension. So at least for this particular um, uh, application, like it's easier to deal with G2 manifolds. So if now, now the, the global picture, if you have an oriented smooth seven manifolds, now you just say that the three, a three form is a G2 structure if G5 defined pointwise by that formula before, is, uh, is a Riemannian metric. Um, but we're not only interested in purely, G, purely in G2 structures, that's a purely topological notion. We are interested in G2 metrics. Uh, then there's this, this proposition which says that um, that Riemannian metric will have holonomy containing G2 if and only if um, the G2 three form is parallel with respect to the Levitivita connection of the metric if and only if uh, it's closed and co-closed. Uh, and this third equation is the one that we use most often to, uh, you know, in trying to, to build these spaces. Um, so some notation when any of these conditions satisfied, we say that phi is torsion free. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, the last condition allows us to talk about the weaker notions of closed and co-closed G2 structures. And notice that the co-closed condition is highly nonlinear because the Hodge star depends on the metric, which depends on phi. So it's not easy to solve these equations. Uh, the simplest classes of examples are you can start with the Calabi L threefold. So here in the first bullet point, uh, uh, you know, uh, X is a Calabi L threefold, omega, uh, little omega is a killer form, large omega is a holomorphic volume form. And then you define phi by this formula, T is a coordinate on S1, uh, that's a G2 structure. And then another class of examples is you have a, you have a hyperkähler form manifold with hyperkähler structure omega one, omega two, omega three, you define phi by this formula where dxi, so T3 is a flat three torus and dxi are flat coordinates. Uh, you define phi by this formula 
the, the x1, 2, 3 just means dx1, yg, dx2, yg, dx3. This is also G2 structure. Um, so so these, these things don't have full holonomy G2. They only have, the first one has holonomy SU3, which is a subgroup of G2. Second one has holonomy SU2, which is a subgroup of SU3, which is a subgroup of G2. Uh, so these are kind of, kind of rather boring examples, but um, yeah, so actually like an important problem is whether one can find full holonomy G2 metrics on these uh, spaces and um, and it's it's not it's not known, but um, there's some there's been some progress recently, especially like on, on numerical um, explorations of these. One can find approximations to full-blown holonomy G2 metrics on these examples. Um, so as I mentioned, there are there are calibrated some manifolds uh, called associative and co-associatives. Uh, associatives are three-dimensional, calibrated by phi. Co-associatives are four-dimensional, calibrated by star of phi. And I'm not going to be discussing the co-closed condition here, just the closed one. So we're going to work with the weaker definition of co-associative, which is that we just require that phi, it's a, it's a four-dimensional submanifold where in a manifold with a closed G2 structure where uh, the, the G2 structure restricts to zero on that submanifold. So this definition is equivalent to the, to the other one when you have a torsion-free G2 manifold. But this one makes sense when you're not talking about star of phi as well. Yeah. So 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 okay. So this was sort of like the very basic introduction. Of course, there's a lot more to say about these things, but I want to move on to the to the result that we so you know the result we would like to 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 find an analog in G two geometry, right? So so this is this Calabial Hitching correspondence. Um, so to set it up, you fix uh, a finite subgroup of S L two C, and then you fix McKay data associated to this subgroup. So G C is, is you know simple complex V algebra dual two gamma. Uh, capital G C is it's a joint form. H C is a Cartan subalgebra and W is the value group. So I'm using you know, this subscript C because soon I'm gonna talk about the like real groups as well. So um, then if you, you take a sigma, you know, a Riemann surface, a smooth projected curve with uh, uh, that switch on the genus and take a rank two holomorphic vector bundle, which is gamma invariant. So gamma acts on the fibers and you require this map to be gamma invariant. Uh, with this condition that the determinant is isomorphic to the canonical bundle of the of the curve. So the, the reason for this last condition is that um, it will imply that uh, the quotient of the total space of the vector bundle by this gamma action, action this is going to be an orbifold, but it's actually going to be a Calabi-Yau orbifold because of that condition. Um, so we're going to have an induced vibration over sigma with fibers uh, AD singularities of type gamma. Okay, so, so from this data, you can construct this, this singular Calabi-Yau trifold with fibers AD singularities. So the result we would like to mimic is, um, is a deformation family that this X0 fits into a deformation family of Calabi-Yau varieties. <clears throat> So this is a theorem of Zendroy, where the base is the space of sections of a certain conic bundle. It's, um, it's this bundle that's described here. Um, you, you consider the action of the vial group on the Cartan, and then you, um, on the Cartan tensor, the, the canonical bundle. And this also has a simultaneous resolution. So this, uh, there's this map F tilde, where the base now doesn't have this quotient by W. So, uh, so yeah, so this X tilde has a map to X where each fiber is a resolution of the fiber on, on X, uh, on the point on X. So, right, so, so, this, so you have this deformation family. And the interesting thing is that the base S is the moduli of camera covers of the GC hitching system for GC, the adjoint group over sigma. Um, 
And based on this observation, um, Diakonescu, Donag, and Pent have uh, proved that, in fact, uh, this is not a coincidence, but um, if you take the integrable system associated to the Hitching system, that's actually isomorphic to, uh, to the integral system that should be taken by taking the intermediate Jacobians of these associated to the fibers of this map F. Um, so, okay, so, so this is a very nice result. And in fact, like uh, the second result, there's absolutely no chance that this can happen in the G2 case, but we can get something uh, close to the first one. Um, and um, yeah, so, so there's a physical description of this, which is how they, they were led to this theorem is that there is some version of large end duality between two different versions of the B model, one on a smoothing and one on a resolution of the, of the singular Calabi L3 fold. Um, so, so yeah, so, so this physical setting was, was known before uh, the result was proven, of course. Um, so, okay. So that's, that's sort of like the, the dream, like the result that we, we would like to have a result like that in due to geometry. So to even set it up, we need two things. First of all, we need to be able to construct G2 orbifolds fiber by AD singularity. So something similar to, uh, to, to that construction before I, I, I uh, so something similar to this description here. Um, and second, we want we, we need a physical setting to know if, if we want to relate this to some equations on the base, some gauge theoretic equation on the base, we need some physical setting to tell us what these equations should be. Um, so okay, so so let's talk about the, the second point first. So assume that you know we, we know how to construct G2 orbifolds fiber by AG singularities. Um, so the way you can approach the physical settings as follows, like um, you consider M, M theory compactified on, on this G2 manifold, and there's a duality relating to, to type 2A string theory on the cotangent bundle of the base with an addition of a certain data, which are these, these six brains on the zero section. Um, so because of this duality, you can, you can study the second, the second geometry instead. Uh, and the BPS conditions for these D6 brains on the on the base is known. You just take, uh, you just have to dimensionally reduce the Hermitian and Mills equations along uh, the fibers of the cotangent bundle. And so, if you do that, you get the following equations, which is an elliptic system. So here, um, A is a so you have you have a complex vector bundle over your three manifold Q. Um, it has a Hermitian metric K. A is a connection that preserves this metric, and theta is a one form of values in the adjoint bundle, which I'm calling a Higgs field. So these are, these are very similar to Hitchens equations. And in fact, um, if you start with Hitchens equations in the holomorphic setting, um, you know, over, over a complex, over, over a Kähler manifold, let's say, um, you can actually recover these equations here by just, you just take, let's say your Higgs field, your holomorphic Higgs field is phi, you just take, you know, you just make it real by defining theta this way, and you choose a metric on the base in the conformal class of the complex structure, and then you're gonna get exactly these equations. But now these equations, they make sense on a manifold that's not a complex manifold, you send you remind a manifold. Um, and I, I, I bypassed the point here that there was a footnote here, which is that this physical setting, the way I described, uh, the way I described is only true for type AN. You can also like modify this argument to work for type DN, but it doesn't really work for the, for the exceptional cases. Um, but in fact, you can actually derive this, this equations more, more directly um, by via this partial topological twist of this theory that uh, that's sort of like the, this low energy limit of the of the material compactification. So, so there's a way to 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 derive these equations without uh, carrying uh, what's the type of the AG singularity that you're looking at. Um, so, 
mostly in this talk, we're going to consider the rescaled equations. Uh, so you, you just rescale the Higgs field uh, by epsilon and take this epsilon to zero, and then the, the curvature term drops out. In this. So, so basically, all that happens here is that this curvature term drops out of the equation. So this is sort of a limiting behavior of the system. Um, so throughout the talk, I'm going to refer to equations on one or two. So just remember that equations one are uh, are the full set of equations, and equations two are the rescaled versions. But most of the time, I'll be talking about equations two. Um, so one one remark is that you know you shouldn't expect to have flat solutions in the rescaled limits. Like you shouldn't be. There are there are examples. So so there are very special examples in which you can also solve the f of a equals to zero condition, but in general, you can't. Um, So at the, end, at the end, I'll explain uh, how to address the more general version of the equations. So okay, so now, so now, now this is this is sort of the physical setting. These are these are the equations that should model uh, a version of that theorem for G two manifolds. Now we need to be able to construct uh, G two orbifolds uh, fibered by AD singularities. So the setting is uh, is very similar to the to the one before. So what you do is you fix an isomorphism of spin four with SU2 times SU2. You let's distinguish SU2 plus and SU2 minus. Uh, you take your finite subgroup to be in the SU2 minus component. Uh, so Q is now a closed orientable smooth three manifold. And you take again now a, a, a gamma invariant rank four real vector bundle now uh, with structure group spin four. But now, because it's gamma invariant, you know the, the structure group actually reduces to the centralizer of gamma in spin four, which is that group over there. I'm going to denote this GV. Okay, so so if you fix that now, you, again you have a orbifold bundle, the same way as before, and the fibers are these um, diffeomorphic to the AG singularities. And the final piece of data that you need is the analog of that condition that ensured that in the previous case that the orbifold was Calabiao is this condition that uh, you need the, the, uh, the self-dual part of, of the two of the lambda two of B to be isomorphic. You, you fix an isomorphism with T of Q. Um, and we think of this A to zero also as an one form with values in this lambda two plus. And this is, a, this is a, an important piece of data that uh, to in, in what follows. So, so what we do now is we to we want to to solve for the closed condition. So we want to find uh, phi uh, G two structure such that d phi equals to zero. What we do is we choose a connection on this on this vibration, and we. Uh, this is going to define a splitting of the of the the round complex and of the differential as well, and that's going to uh, give us equations in terms of simpler objects. So, so for example, once once we've chosen this connection, this a to zero is now a form of type one two. So it has one component in the base and two components in the fiber. So in local coordinates, it looks something like this, um, where omega i lives in lambda two plus and dxi lives in the cotangent of q. Um, so yeah, so we want to find a three form, which is positive and closed. So if we start with this N sets that, you know, we want it to be sort of similar to, to the local model we had, oops, the local model we had for, for, um, you know, in the, so the, the local model for this, for this vibration is the case of um, T3 times a hypercalar surface that I mentioned before. So you would like your phi zero to be of type a to zero plus something of type three zero. Um, so so you know a function times a volume form on the base. So so if you if you use these NSATs, you get that the the equation for the for for d phi of zero is that one, and these two terms on the right hand side have different types. So they have to vanish separately if you want to impose these equal to zero. So dh, dh here is the horizontal component of, of the exterior differential, df is the fiber component, and then there's a curvature component as well. So you need these two things to vanish separately. And then the result is that um, 
if if you're given h so one of the results is that you, if you're given h you can find mu, z, uh, mu zero such that that second part of the equation vanish and the form is positive in an arbitrary large neighborhood of q in m zero so the, the the issue here is that you can you cannot so if, if you're working on a non-compact manifold you, like we are you cannot so you might have problems with the with the curvature blowing up at infinity. So so you cannot solve it. Um, you, you might not be able to solve it outside of a of a bounded region. You don't have that problem if, if your fiber is a K2 surface. Um, okay, so so then you essentially can solve this condition uh, and then to define a closure to structure. Now all you need to do is to solve the first part. You have dh a to zero equals to zero. And then there's a condition under which um, you can so there's a, there is a there is a sufficient condition for this to 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 be solved. I'll, I'll discuss it in a minute. Uh, but the point is that this this can be achieved in, in some cases. Um, yeah, the, the remark is that this remark is that this is somewhat analogous to a situation hypercalar geometry, which uh, you have a, a real analytic killer manifold, and then you can find a thickening in the cotangent bundle uh, with a hypercalar metric that extends this killer manifold. Um, but of course, that's, that's a much stronger statement. But this is sort of in that spirit. Um, so you, you can actually construct examples using linear connections. Um, so, so here there is a freedom, like in this, in this connection, it's a variable that you can choose to solve your problem. It can be any errors in connection, but if you want to 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 work with with linear connections, that's going to be very restrictive, but it's also easier to see what's going on. So, if you fix a Riemannian metric and a spin structure on, on the base, you can take the spinner bundle, um, and then you take any other vector bundle, but with structure group, you know, um, rank two complex bundle with structure group S two minus, it could be the spinner bundle, the dual of the spinner bundle, for example. And then you can construct the spin four bundle um, V by requiring that this equation holds. And then automatically you get that lambda two V is, is just, it's just equal to T of Q. So in that case, you can take your A to zero to be the identity. And then the condition that it's, that satisfies this equation that we need for a closure to structure is just a condition that the connection is torsion free. So, so you can potentially generate examples using this. Okay, so 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 now we need to if, if you have such orbifolds, we have, we have a mechanism to build them. Now we, we need to construct the deformation families as well, uh, and hopefully put G two structures on on the fibers of this family. As you see, this this is not possible in this general generally, but there's something uh, there's some step that you can can do. There's something simpler that you can do. So, okay, so that's what I just said. Um, so the construction goes as follows. Uh, so this is just a sketch of how the construction goes, of course. Uh, so you, you, you're gonna basically like the idea is to use the cool cycle of this, of this vector bundle V defining the orbifold to construct, uh, so for, to construct your, your family of moduli uh, over the base. Uh, so, so first you define this, this vector bundle uh, whose fibers are cartant tensor R3. So this, this fancy H here just means a bundle of cartons of algebras over the base. So, you know, so you, you, can, cons you can actually construct this and this base, this, this fiber is identified with the parameter space of Kronheimer's family of complete hypercalum ALE metrics on the minimal resolution of the AG singularity. So the, the, the crucial thing is that H is identified, the carton is identified with the second uh, cohomology of the ALE space. Uh, and then, okay, so once you have this bundle of parameter spaces, then you can glue together the full family. Uh, so actually the surfaces that sit on top of the parameter spaces. So you do this locally uh, and you're able to glue it to a global object over the base uh, by using an action of the of the structure group of the bundle that you started with, 
on the on the total space of the family by automorphism. So you, you need you need an appropriately defined action. And then that, that will give you a family of surfaces. So that's that's the sketch of how this construction goes. Um, yeah, and then, and then the, okay, so so once okay, so now now once you have this this family, now you want to know like uh, when can you put um, in in the central fiber you have a disclosure to structure, can you trans can you can you somehow use the equations on the base, the gauge theoretic equations on the base to define a closed to structure on a nearby fiber? So we're working with the rescaling rescaled equations again. So so we have this condition that theta commutes with itself. Uh, and because of that, uh, you can simultaneously, you know, if you if you work locally, you can simultaneously diagonalize the components. Um, yeah, so 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 they actually take values in the Cartan subalgebra. So in this Cartan bundle that I wrote. Um, yeah, so so. Um, yeah, and then recall that we have an isomorphism of the cotangent of the tangent bundle with uh, lambda two plus, so we can actually see it as a section of E. And then you just consider this uh, space M theta, which is the inverse image by this by this map, the total space of the family uh, of the image of the of of the base by this by this Higgs field, and this is going to be seven-dimensional space by construction. And the generic fiber of this is different morphics one ALE space. Basically by this construction. So I, I, I swept something under the rug here, actually like these smooth things, they're not parameterized by theta itself. You can have two different thetas having the same, defining the same uh, smoothing, but they, they are parameterized by this joint spectrum of theta. So because theta commutes with itself, you can simultaneously diagonalize it and uh, the components, and then you have a joint spectrum lambda theta. And then from this lambda theta, you can write down a candidate G2 structure, which I didn't hear because it's a little cumbersome to, to write down. But basically, the idea is that this lambda theta is giving you a map to, to the parameter space of the um, uh, you know, this, this is taking values in, in the, the parameter space of, of Kronheimer's deformation. And that's, uh, you know, this is giving like a, a triple of Kähler classes and then these determine the actual uh, Kähler structures. And then you, you know, so, uh, you know, by, by the Torelli theorem, so you can just, uh, you can use that. And then also because you have the, the twisting isomorphism, you can, uh, pair them with um, with one forms on the base, and you can write something like sum of omega dxi using this lambda theta that way. So that's basically the idea of how this works. But the, the the point is that lambda theta determines a, a candidate. It determines uh, the two one part of of uh, phi theta uh, directly, and then you can determine the three zero the the Sorry, the one two part, and then you can determine the, the you can construct the three zero part by uh, going back to that result that I mentioned before. That um, you know that you can you can always you can always find it uh, such a three zero form in a bounded neighborhood of the zero section. So the crucial thing is just to to construct the 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 one two part. The, the three zero one will come from that result. So you can you can there there is a there is a sort of better way to understand this joint spectrum, which is uh, there is a there is a hyperkähler quotient uh, description. Um, you know you can think of this map that takes theta to theta wedge theta as a, as a hyperkähler moment map with respect to the action by gauge transformation. So here G is 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 the real form of the of the group G C that I introduced before. Um, and then this spectrum is just the image under the projection, uh, you know, from the zero set to the zero set module uh, to the hyperkähler quotient. Um, but you know, it, it's crucial 
you know that that q is an associative because you have to identify tq with, with the image of h uh, sorry with the imaginary the imaginary quaternions to to write this quaternionic this, this hypercalar moment map um, and then the remaining conditions on, on the on the rescaled equations so the remaining conditions were that you know theta is covariantly constant and and also you know uh, the covariant derivative of star of theta is zero as well uh, the remaining conditions will imply imply that this lambda theta is a harmonic section um, so this is actually a good thing because there's a recent work of Joyce and Carigianis that actually construct torsion free G2 structures. Uh, if you starting with a Z2 twisted harmonic one form, so so it's a it's a specific situation here, like this W, you know, you would have like a A1 singularity or W Z2, and they actually construct a full-blown holonomy G2 metric uh, from this data uh, on the base. So so this this so it seems that this theory is on the is on the right track. Of course, like that result is already very hard in the in the A1 case. In this other case, would be much harder as well. But at least it seems that this is on the right track to a to a more general theory. Um, but there is one problem, which is that uh, I mentioned this Donaldson condition that needs to be uh, solved so that you can fully solve the the closed condition and it's it's this condition is actually not solvable uh, without further restrictions on the curvature so this donaldson conditions i didn't i didn't say what it was before but what it is is that for you to to get a closed to structure uh, it, it's not a necessary condition, it's just a sufficient condition right so so it says that if locally on q uh, this one two part represents the, the derivative of an affine section of the bundle of cohomologies of the fiber then then uh, the 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 corresponding G two structure will be closed. So, for example, you can ensure this condition happens if you're if you have zero curvature, like I mentioned. This can happen in very special cases, but uh, not in a generic situation. Um, so, so that's that's one problem with this um, with this thing. If you're trying to follow the the Donaldson uh, road. Um, so, so I mean, my takeaway from this is that actually, like the the rescaled equation should not be used to construct closure to structure on the nose, although you, you you sort of can in special situations, uh, or at least not if if you are interested in preserving the structure of a co-associative vibration, which is what the Donaldson theory does. So, but instead, like what what you should the way you should think of uh, these equations too is to solve an adiabatic version of the of the problem. So there's an adiabatic version of the closed and co-closed conditions. <laughs> what this is is um, I didn't write this down because there's a bunch of equations, but basically, you know, you can write the d phi equals to zero and d star phi equals to zero equations using the, the connection split it into the uh, equations involving uh, the various tensors that are introduced, and then basically. There's a bunch of curvature terms. You scale the fiber uh, to go to volume equal to zero, and that's going to drop all the curvature terms of the equations. So that actually solves all the problems that you encounter in this theory. <laughs> but what you get is a limiting object. It's not really the object you want. <laughs> but there is some hope that you can reconstruct a co-associative vibration from an adiabatic co-associative vibration. <laughs> so, so Donaldson studied this this. You know, develop this theory uh, of adiabatic limits of co-associative K three vibrations, and basically the the final result is that this adiabatic structure is determined by a single object. It's just a section of this flat bundle of cohomologies of the fiber. So here here's a K three surface. So this looks like R three nineteen. So you know R twenty two with a with a indefinite um, inner product, and it's just a section of this flat bundle that has maximal image with respect to this, which is positive and, and has maximal image with respect to this, to this, um, um, to this inner product. So in the early case, it's slightly different. Um, what you get is, is just this harmonic spectrum that I, that I, that I, that I mentioned. So it's, it's some section that satisfies um, um, 
some one form that satisfies, um, uh, you know, that's closed and co-closed. Uh, the, the main difference between the two pictures is, is that actually in the, in the K trick is you're solving for the metric on the base. Um, you know, you have, you have this, this metric uh, on, the, on this flat bundle. Uh, and then you, you can use a metric on the base, but in the early setting, actually this metric is fixed from, the, from that twisting isomorphism in the beginning from the orbifold that starts the whole construction. So there is, there is actual some, actually some conceptual difference between the two pictures. Uh, so, so, um, so the reason I'm mentioning this is because actually for, for a long time, I, I, I thought that this construction should be just an analog of, of Donaldson's construction, but for ALE fibers, but actually because there is this quali quali qualitative difference between the two, uh, it's not really, actually you should think of this as some sort of deformation of, of the Donaldson picture. So here's, this is a conjecture, but this is, uh, I think there's solid evidence that this is the correct way to think about this uh, Higgs equations in this G2 context. Um, so so this, these equations, these rescaled equations, uh, they should really uh, provide the singularizations of these co-associative K-tree vibrations with AD singularities. So for example, a version a conjecture of what should hold in the A1 case is the following. So if you, if you suppose you have an orbifold bundle of nodal K3 surface, so just A1 singularities. And, and suppose that you have this structure of adiabatic associative vibration coming from, from Donaldson's theory. So you have this Donaldson section from the base to the cohomology of the fiber. So here it's, it's a nodal K3, so you, you drop one dimension there. Now assume you have a, a, a solution of the of that hitching system in the A1 case, so G equals SU2, then you, then you should have a Donaldson section that takes values in R319. Um, and the reason this should be true is just because, uh, you know, in the, in the nodal case, you have this, this um, section with maximal image in R318. Now you're trying to embed it in R319. So there's, you need to deform in this extra real direction. And then, well, this harmonic, one form is, should be exactly the object that tells you how to deform it to be a, a maximum so manifold of this larger vector space. So that's sort of why uh, this conjecture is almost definitely true. So this is sort of uh, the picture of how this should go. Okay, so I'll just, I promise that I would mention something about the equations one, and this, this is very new actually. Um, the, for a long time, nobody knew how to address the more general version of the equations. Recall that the equations one, they have the, the curvature term. Uh, uh, so so you, the, the first equation is f of a plus theta h theta equals to zero. You don't have, it doesn't commute anymore, right? So you don't have this interpretation in terms of Cartan sub-out represent the cohomology of a ALE space, or at least not of a, of a cohomology of a complete ALE space as constructed by Kronheimer. And we also lose the notion of a joint spectrum because you cannot simultaneously conjugate things uh, anymore. But there's been some progress recently. There is a, a result by Ilowski and Foscolo. Um, they constructed a more general family of hypercalar ALE spaces deforming hypercalar cones. Um, so so this, this construction generalizes con Kronheimer's construction to allow also for incomplete ALE metrics. So for example, in the, in the A1 case, the, the, the Kronheimer parameter space is, a, is two dimensional while the Bielowski Foscolo parameter space is five dimensional. So, uh, so there's way more incomplete hypercalar ALE metrics than complete ones. And so why am I mentioning this? Because uh, they actually were able to show that uh, if you choose a basis for, for the gene variant polynomials in the Lie algebra, this is gonna induce a hitching map from the, from the set of solutions to the full equations onto the parameter space of, of their hypercalar metrics. So it's not that easy to, to, to define this, but, but you can do this. Um, so so this, this is a strong, uh, indication that actually this, this parameter space is the right one to look at in, in the setting of, of these equations, at least if you, if, you're not, if you don't want to work in the rescaling limit, if you want to work with the full equations. 
And this also adds more flexibility because now you don't have this, this strong restriction on the curvature. So your curvature could be anything that makes that moment map, that hyperkähler moment map description uh, consistent. So for example, if it's a central element in the Lie algebra, uh, that still makes sense. Um, and then, you know, if you expect that uh, a point in the image of, in the, in the hitching image of this, of the, you know, in the, in the image of the hitching map will define an, an adiabatic for associative ALE vibration, but now for incomplete metrics. Um, and yeah, I should mention, of course, like in the, in the rescaled limit, you also have this hitching map. It's, it's much easier to, to do. To, to define that in that case. And then you can also study this S theta, but in that case, it makes more sense to just work with the lambda theta. So in that case, like lambda theta is the spectrum and S theta is like the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial. And the relationship between the two is just, you know, the usual relationship between the coefficients of a polynomial and the eigenvalues. But in this other situation here, you really have to work with this hitching map because you, do, you lose the, the notion of the spectrum. So, but this is more recent and this is a work in progress, um, but it, it, looks, it looks very promising. It looks like this is the, the correct and final picture of this, of this problem. Okay. Thank you. Is it expected that one can use co-associative vibrations in a similar way as SYZ vibration to have some mirror symmetry of deep manifold? I think that that would be the dream, right? Uh, yeah, so I, I think it's very hard. So I mentioned this paper of Young Lee in the beginning that um, he studies the, uh, it, it's just about adiabatic co associative vibrations. It's not fully co associative vibrations, but he defines this Mukai duality between, you know, you, you start with one of such vibration, you do this Mukai duality on the fibers, then you can actually quit the dual vibration also an adiabatic uh, co associative vibration, but then it's always adiabatic, right? And then it, it, I guess it, it depends on this conjecture of Donaldson, whether you can reconstruct the full co-associative vibration from the adiabatic one. You know, there's this, I, I mean, actually, actually Donaldson proved that uh, there's a power series that can be solved term by term to reconstruct the co-associative vibration. The problem is that we don't know that it has no zero radius of convergence, you know? And I, as far as I know, nobody knows an example, although there are some people working on it, but hopefully combined with this, with this construction of young this, this could give something similar to that. The mirror is an AG to manifold. Mirror is a G to manifold, yes. Question? Yes. Uh, thanks, Rodrigo, again. 